worth nearly £53,000, the winner. We can see now some of the fancied runners in training and on the course. Here's Julian Wilson. This was the start of the season's most eagerly awaited comeback, the return to action after 22 months of Spartan Missile, in the race at Stratford last month that commemorated his late owner, John Thorne. On the run-in, it's Random Leg by four lengths from Spartan Missile, but Spartan Missile starting to close. Spartan Missile really running now on the far side, a hundred yards to run, and Spartan Missile is still coming. Spartan Missile and Diana Henderson, that's the line, it's a photo, Random Leg and Spartan Missile. And the missile failed by just a neck, but clearly the old fire was still there. Certainly his performance delighted John's widow, Wendy Thorne, as well as her jockey daughter, Diana Henderson. It was a finishing effort to revive memories of Aintree. It's all the need from Spartan Missile, and here comes John Thorne. 54-year-old John Thorne putting in a storming finish. It's all the need from Spartan Missile. All the need is going to win it. At the line, all the need wins the national. Spartan Missile is second. But the family felt that at Aintree, a professional was needed. So at Newbury two weeks ago, Huel Davis took over the rain. Spartan Missile coming there very strongly on the stand side, Huel Davis, and Peter Scudamore, the co-champion on the far side on Burnt Oak, and Burnt Oak still with the advantage at the final fence. Burnt Oak lands in the lead from Spartan Missile, Heiko just jumping in third, and it's Burnt Oak from Spartan Missile as they race into the closing stages. Burnt Oak being pressed by Spartan Missile all the time, but holding him all the way to the line. Burnt Oak from Spartan Missile, Spartan Missile putting in a determined challenge now as they race to the line. He's going to get up, Spartan Missile from Burnt Oak at the line. Heiko third. It was a ride that left Huel Davis both breathless and excited. Yeah, great ride. You really gave me a lovely ride. Hey, he came in this straight and I thought, well, I haven't got to the bottom of him yet. You know, he's got a long, you know, he'd get four mile, no problem. I just thought Peter was sitting there trying to wait and race in front and trying to outdo me for tow. Um, and going to the last, to be perfectly honest, I thought he would outgun me for speed. But when I just gave him one backhander halfway the running, I was trying to let him down and really let him run partly because of his legs. Um, I wanted to hold on to him as long as I could. Um, but once I gave him one backhander and just showed him the stick, he flew, you know, just really showed me a good turn of speed, which I didn't know he had. Bona Moman is the principal hope of trainer Fook Warwin, who earlier this week saddled his 2,000th winner. Bona Moman's a mudlark, unlike Warwin's other runner, Del Moss, who prefers good ground. Win or lose, Del Moss, who's 13, will be running his last race. Bona Moman was led by Del Moss in a good canter earlier this week. Bona Moman is a real old-fashioned type of horse, who more win saddle to win his last three races, notably at Cheltenham. They're racing down to the final fence now. Bona Moman on the near side and Talon on the far side. Then comes Puckerfella, Troy's Wood and Jacko at the final fence now. Bona Moman lands in the lead from Talon who jumps in second. And racing into the closing stages now, it's Bona Moman from Talon. As they race up the hill, Bona Bowman increasing his advantage now. Bona Bowman going away from Talon as they race up towards the line. Bona Bowman and Kevin Mooney win the New Year handicap chase. And that was a performance in testing ground of a real stare. Del Moss, like Warwin's last national winner, Team Spirit, is owned by a partnership of Americans. Twelve months ago, he led for much of the way and was in front over the chair. Earlier, he'd been interfered with by loose horses. Still third on the run-in, he was caught and collared close home by loving words. At least Del Moss has shown he can jump the fences. But what a boner moment. Well, I think you've handled them very well. I think, you know, no really serious problems anyway. How good a jumper is he? Um, he wasn't a very good jumper when we first started him off, but I think he's got the hang of it now. Uh, last time at Warwick, he jumped reasonably well anyway, you know, I was very satisfied with his jumping. So, um, I think, uh, no problems. Is there any particular part of the race or any particular fence that would worry you with this fellow? The chair is his thing, is he's, um, although he does jump ditches really well, but I think the chair is going to pose him a problem. Warwin's pair are just two out of nine runners from the racing village of Lambourne, four of whom are leading fancies. Amongst them is Keen Gaddy, trained by Nick Gaisley. Keen Gaddy is a fresh horse after a mid-season break, but soft ground is all against him. Gaisley's two previous runners have both fallen at beaches. So how does he rate Keen Gaddy? Well, I think for a start, he's well handicapped. I think if the handicapper had come out again after 
his race at Sandown the other day, he'd probably have four or five pounds more. So I've got to be pleased with the handicap. And secondly, I'm very pleased with the way that his final two races have gone. He had a nice race at Ludlow when he was fifth, and he won very nicely at Sandown. Saw the trip out well and got the three miles really well, which is uh, a thing that's always been a little bit suspect with him in the past, but he's got that. So the, the final thing's gone well. But he jumped uh, Aintree very, very well last year when he was second in the Topham Trophy. He just got beat by Beacon Time. He went to the front after jumping the, uh, the first open ditch. The, he jumped the chair, and then the third, which will be the first open ditch in the national, and jumped superbly from then on. The leader is Keen Gaddy, ridden by Richard Lindley at Beechers. Jumps it well. Today it's Steve Smith Eccles on top, and despite the going, he could have a ride to remember. But the horse that makes Aintree look almost easy is Gritter. Last year's national winner by 15 lengths, he'd previously won the Fox Hunters Chase. But this year, for the first time in four seasons, he's missed his hunting and prepared for the national in normal professional races. The plan was that John Frankham should ride him, first at Nottingham and then at Aintree. At Nottingham, though still in need of a race, he did everything but win. Gritar is over, a long run in. Jack goes over in second place. Jacko under strong pressure from Peter Scudamore. But Gritar is running on, but he's powering now as Jacko comes at him. Jacko and Peter Scudamore closing the gap. 150 yards to run. John Frankham looks over his shoulder and Gritar is holding on. But here comes Jacko. 50 yards to run and Jacko closing with every stride. And Jacko starting to get up at the line. Jacko wins it. Gritar second. Romando is third. Afterwards, Gritar had a really good blow. And not even the loss of John Frankham, who's injured, could dispel Frank Gilman's delight. I thought it was a smashing race in Nottingham. Went in the wide, wide outside. And looked like a counting home. It just made a bit of soft ground in and around his team. Very, very pleased. He needed it badly. Did him a world of good. I think he's improved at least a stone since then. A stone? That's a lot of weight. A lot of weight, but he's, he's very, very well. Very well. Well, obviously, it was a blow for you to lose John Frankham. There's only one John Frankham. Um, what made you pick Paul Barton as substitute? Well, he was the only one that had ridden him for the professionals. I had a word with John, and he thought, well, perhaps he'd, as he'd ridden him, he might be as good as anybody else. He's a very good horseman and quiet. The horse didn't take a lot of riding, really. So you don't ask him to do what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't like, doesn't like being told when to take off too much. So I think he'd make a very good jockey for him, actually. I'm very, very confident with, with him. There's just one question that Frank won't answer. Will Gritter win it again? Well, no, until it's Saturday night. <laughs> In fact, we'll all have the winner of that, of course. Well, I've been joined by two of the great injury characters, Fred Winter, who won the race twice as a jockey and twice as a trainer, and Fook Warwin, uh, once in the 30s on Wellstone, wasn't it? Yeah. As a jockey, and of course you trained Team Spirit, wasn't it? Uh, to win in the 60s. Yeah. Uh, I think we ought to start, Fred, if you don't mind, with Fook, because he's having the sort of week that people dream about. I mean, eight winners already. No, no, it's marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe it, but yeah, it's come off. I mean, what's happened? The stables had problems. We had problems around about Cheltenham time. Yeah. And they weren't 100%, you know, but they're spot on now, thank goodness. Sort of week you'd like to have, Fred, any time, wouldn't it? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've had a very good season, so I can't complain. But I've had a bad time over the last th three weeks or a month. Now, not many people are talking about your horse, Venture to Cognac, but he has got a touch of class, hasn't he? Yeah, well, when, whenever they make a remark, it's rather rude, you know? But I think he's got a, lot, a, a fair chance He's got a lot of class, as you say. Uh, he's never run a bad race this year, or just one. And uh, he'll jump the course, and he's very, very well. It's the first national ride for your son-in-law, Oliver Sherwood, isn't it? Yes, he won the Fox Hunters here two years ago. Uh, otherwise, he hasn't ridden here. Uh, you're a great injury specialist. I remember you walking around with Tommy Smith and showing him where to go, and he went on to win it. Um, what have you done with Oliver? Well, I've, I've left it a little bit to him, actually, because he's a horse that's got to be handy. And uh, so I've said, well, if you want to go down the outside first time, do. But, I mean, you want to work your way towards the inside as soon as you can. Now, uh, folk, you've got uh, Burnham Oldman yes. and Delmos, which you, right. Delmos likes to bowl off in front. He'll go along in front, yeah. Which is the better of the two, Burnham Oldman? I think he's got the best chance to do. He's been very heavily tipped. Well, his, his form is good. He's won his last three races. 
Uh, and he's won very easy. He won 20 lengths to Cheltenham. He won 20 lengths to, to uh, Warwick. Four and a half miles, four, four miles to Cheltenham. And he really gets the trip. And he, he enjoys the ground. He loves this ground. The other horse doesn't like the ground so much, you know. But uh, this horse is a bit slow. But I think it will slow them up the ground. And, uh, but he stays all, all day. Fine. So now, five miles. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Can we have a quick uh, word from each of you about uh, if you were both riding again, which horse of the whole lot you'd pick? I wouldn't mind riding Fuchs. <laughs> he would do me. I loved, I loved to, to come from behind, and, and uh, that would suit me. Mm. Hit. Well, I know we were, we were talking, I was talking to Fed the other morning, and he, when he won, when he won on, what was it? Oh, Kilmore. Kilmore. He was last going away, you know, from the water. And uh, if they went past, the cell horse might be last, but he, he, he might still win. I fancy him. Oh, no, no, that's the tip. Thanks that's very much, right. gentlemen. Right. Nice to see you both again. You. Very much indeed. Well, from former winners of the National, both as trainers and uh, jockeys, here's the man in form, Peter Skidamore. One of the last. Well done, Peter. Thank you. What's the ground like out there? Uh, it's very much the same as yesterday. Pro possibly a little less moisture in the ground, but uh, very much the same as yesterday. Uh, of course, you've got Broadsword of the next, which is a rerun of the champion hurdle. Yeah. Uh, see if I can <laughs> live up to his that my faith in him or he can live up to my faith in him i think he run very well of course he's uh, he's five pounds better off this time isn't he yeah that, that, that's not going to make much difference i don't think it's uh, just you know if, he, if he's come come to what i think is his best form i think he'll run gay brief very close now peter fortino's express you've got in the national you were telling me three weeks ago you had the choice of three but this one was the one you settled for this is the horse i settled for arthur stevenson says he'll run very well and if he says he'll run very well he will do now he's got a reputation of being a bit difficult to ride you've got to wait with him and uh not uh, showing the front too soon. Is that right? Well, I think that's, that's a, my, a, a nice problem to have when I get over the last. I'll <laughs> worry about that when I meet it. Yeah. Of course, you can't get in front too soon, though, can you? Well, no, it's, it's a long run in, but uh, I've never been in that position, so I'll have to see what happens. Yeah. He's a big, strong, nice looking horse, isn't he? Yes, they say he jumps very well. I've had a word with Niall Madden, who's, who's ridden him, and uh, everybody says he, he, hopefully, if he behaves himself and I don't fall off him, he'll get round. Fine, well, I don't want to put too much pressure on you for the next, Peter, by keeping you here. Hope all goes well. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. And Peter going out to ride in the next. Now, Miss Helen Hamilton, trainer of Peter Sandy from Scotland. Uh, could be Scotland's second winner, we're told. Well, we hope so, yes. He's very well indeed. And um, despite the sun shining today, I think that there's enough give in the ground for him to run really well. Of course, I seem to remember you had a very adventurous trip when you won the, ground, the Welsh Grand. Yes, National. that was in 1981. What happened then? He won. I mean, well, we were completely snowed in and uh, couldn't get out of the farm or down the road or anywhere. He had to start off on his four legs instead of in four wheels. <laughs> and how far did you have to walk in there? Well, it was quite enough, I can tell you, in the snow, quite far enough. You've had no sort of problems with that this time? No, no, nothing like that. Uh, what about your preparation up there? Where do you do your work? Up the hills, up and down the hills mainly. We have one very kind farmer who lets us use his very nice flat fields and we can get a really good gallop in there. But apart from that, he does just a lot of hill climbing and work around the farm. Now that ground is going to be a bit trying out there, but he stays forever. He stays forever, And he's yes. brave. Yeah, I hope so. He'd love it, wouldn't he? <laughs> I hope so, yes. If he gets over the first three and really settles then, yeah. I shall be happy. Because he starts slowly. Yeah, but is that the right way here, surely? Um, well, it is if you can avoid the trouble. Yeah. But, uh, There's a strong feeling knocking around today that today is Ladies' Day. Now, which lady? Well, that's it, isn't it? That's a very leading question. Have you got that and, feeling? Um, well, I think it could be Colbert or, or Peter Sandy. Yeah. I hope it's Peter Sandy. And, of course, uh, they're both past winners of the Welsh Grand National the yes. past two years, aren't yes. they? Yes, yes. be yes. interesting, that. Thanks very yes. much, indeed. Thank you. A couple of uh, familiar faces here. Steve Smith-Eccles, as usual, smiling. And Johnny Burke, the only rider, Johnny, actually, to be in the race, who's won the Grand National before. Well, that's right, yeah, 76 on ranked trade. So uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's hot tomato, to, uh, hot tomato, isn't it? Uh, it's a hot tomato in Greg Trade's class. Well, I hope he is. <laughs> Actually, he was third in the top of him two years ago, so uh, he's been round. And, uh, you know, was hoping for a good ride, really. It's a couple of years since he showed his best form, though, isn't it? Uh, yes, but uh, the trainer tells me he's back to his best now. Now, Steve Smith Eccles. Um, how heavy are you today, Steve? Nine-seven-three. You've been wasting, have you, like mad? Well, I've been taking things easy. 
And you're riding King Gaddy. Have you got to put up overweight or not? No, I do the weight, no problem. No. Oh, the story no. this morning was quite wrong then, was it? Wrong. It said you'd be putting up overweight. No. Right, now it's been worth waiting for, has it? Because the ground's changed, hasn't it? Is it your best sort of ground? It's drying up a little bit, but no, you'd like it better than what it is now. I mean, basically, it's a top of the ground horse. So, uh, he'll give me a good ride, he jumps well. It's just a matter of getting the trip. Actually, watching him uh, last year in the top of him, he jumped really well then, and he's a better horse now, isn't he? Yes, uh, I've only ridden him twice, and I've had two super rides off him. Um, I should have a good ride. I'll tell you what, a better mate of yours is watching at home, John Franco. Have you spoken to him lately? I haven't, actually. <laughs> I rang him about three or four days ago. He's he been good form, John. Yeah. Nothing worries him. Right, now, this rush to the first, John. Um, the senior steward every year tells all you boys to keep it steady, but when you get out there, nothing happens. Well, it's the same every year, you know, and this year I think it's going to be harder than ever, with the ground being so bad. And I think myself, there's only going to be seven or eight finishers, really. It's going to be a really very tough race. Would you agree with that, Steve? Yeah, I would, actually. Definitely. And where are you going to be looking for ground early on? I go right down the inside. Right down the inside? Right down the inside. And John, where will you be? Not far off there either, right down the inside. But not dropping out early on, hopefully to get the threat, you know. OK, well, a familiar question to both of you. You've got the ride you've got, uh, but uh, looking around the rest, uh, John, which would you like to be on if you had a full choice? Petey Sandy in the ground. No, I think, I think he's got a good chance. Steve? I wouldn't mind riding Corby here. It's funny, actually, Miss Hamilton's just said that's the danger. Yeah, yeah. She obviously fancies Peter Sandy very much. Yeah. Corby I think in this sort of ground, you'll get one of the low weights. Mm. You know, coming to the fore. I'll tell you what, if Corbier wins, there's a fortune being won in Jersey because there's a uh, Corbier in Jersey and they're all back here, apparently. Really? Yeah. yeah. OK, enjoy yourselves around there. Thank Good looking out for you. Thanks indeed. Uh, Hugh Davis, who rides the uh, Spartan Missile, and Graham McCourt. Now, to you, you've got Graham, you've got Midday Gun. Both fancy the horses. Yeah, I think Hugh's a great danger to us, and if he's upside with me at the last, I think we'll have a bit of fun. Now, this is your first ride of the National, isn't it? Yeah. You won't uh, forget it either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you been around the Aintree fences many times? Yes, I walked around last year, and I walked around this morning with Bob Champs and Mr Webber, and we had a good chat. They didn't, they don't look so dangerous, you know. What were they telling you? Champs were telling me that he would sooner go around in a smooth rhythm, and so he's always balanced. Um, he thought that was the main thing, and. Um, he said, apart from keeping out of trouble, it's not, it's not, it's all down to luck, really. Yeah, it's luck in the early stages, really, isn't it, Hill? Oh, with well, the field there is today, 41 runners. Um, it's going to be crazy going over those first three, I think. Just trying to find daylight to, just to get over them. Now, you've got those uh, famous colours worn by John, the late John Thorne. Yes. Spartan Missiles colours there. Um, it would be in keeping with the tradition of national stories if Spartan Missile won, because uh, John had given so much to the national hand racing, hadn't he? Certainly. Um, I can't think of anybody who done, did more for National Hunt, uh, from, the, from the saddle, you know. Um, a great man. We should all follow in his footsteps, you know, with, with his attitude towards racing. He's really good. Now, very few people have been allowed to ride Spartan this I'm told, uh, even at home. And so. no. What sort of a ride is he? He's a great ride. Um, I've, I've ridden him out, ridden a bit of work on him at home, and, and ridden him at Newbury on the track. He's, he's an old gentleman. Um, he gets a bit fresh like any other old characters do but um no he's a great ride lovely ride doesn't pull too much he, he probably pulled down at the first which i think he did last when he ran the la in his last national he um swung on down to the first fence with mr thorn and uh his daughter said to me that he he was a bit keen yeah. so i should be um basically trying to hunt around for the first circuit certainly trying to get him back on his hocks for the first of course graham he's a horse most jockeys admire isn't he which uh, yeah. himself. Yeah, everybody likes him, and he's the way he's been round before. It's it's a great thing to have been round before. That's the one thing with my little horse. He's never been round, and I think it's a tremendous advantage having been round. And the horses know they're back there, you know. Yeah. That's of course, you know. Um, he's uh, jumped one hill. Sixty-four fences here, Spartan <laughs> Missile. Yeah, uh, yeah. Without falling. Yeah. yeah, that's a big pressure point on me. <laughs> Now, your horse is a bit small, Graham, but of course that's no handicap in the national, is it? He's very small, but he's a very evenly balanced horse, and he helps himself a lot at the obstacles, and 
I got a lot of confidence in him to get round anyway. He's trying to give himself confidence. Yeah. He's trying to do. He's windy, really. <laughs> There's going to be some chat I can see out, out there on the starting line. You Thanks both very much indeed. Okay, Hope you. you enjoy the national. Uh, Hugh Davis and Graham McCall. Uh, it's at 320 and is worth nearly £53,000 to the winner. Uh, there's a very big field indeed, 41 of them. And here now, a check for you on the runners, riders and their colours. They're headed by number two, Gritter, the 1982 winner. Ridden by Paul Barton and favourite at 7 to 1 after late money. Number three is Venture de Cognac, ridden by Oliver Sherwood. Latest price is 25 to 1. For Tacroy, the horse who changed hands yesterday. He's ridden by Irishman Frank Berry. Latest price, 33 to 1. Five is Spartan Missile, the second favourite, ridden by Huel Davis. Latest price, 9 to 1. Six is Corbier, owned by the youngest owner in the race, 22-year-old Brian Burra. He's ridden by Ben DeHaan. Latest price, 12 to 1. Seven is the mount of Joy Carrier, King Spruce, the Irish Grand National winner. Latest price, 33 to 1, but back to that price this morning. Eight is Royal Mail, one of the two oldest horses in the race at the age of 13. Ridden by Tim Thompson-Jones, latest price, 50 to 1. Nine is Petey Sandy, the challenger from Scotland. Ridden by Geordie Dunn, a late fancy at 12 to 1. Ten is Michael Dickinson's runner, Political Pop. Ridden by Graham Bradley, none the worse for that fall in the first. Latest price, 33 to 1. Eleven, the Ladies Master. Ridden by Willie Mullins. Latest price, 200 to 1. Thirteen, another Irish challenger, Caro Boy. Ridden by Jerry Newman. Latest price, 33 to 1. Fourteen, Bowman Omen representing Fook Warren. A real late run on this in the last two days. Ridden by Kevin Mooney, latest price, eight to one. 15, another fancy, Midday Gun, ridden by Graham McCourt, latest price, 14 to one. 16, Pilot Officer, representing Mercy Rymel, ridden by Sam Mooreshead, 22 to one. 17, Beacon Time, Ginger McCain's runner, ridden by John Joe O'Neill, yet to complete the Grand National course, latest price, 33 to 1. 18, Grease Paint, the number one challenger from Ireland, ridden by Colin Magna, latest price, 16 to 1. 19 is Beach King, now ridden by Peter Duggan, latest odds, 50 to 1. 20 is 14 as Express. Ridden by the joint champion, Peter Scudamore. Latest odds, 16 to 1. 21, Hot Tomato. Ridden by John Burke, the only man riding who's ridden a winner before. Latest odds, 100 to 1. 23, another Scottish challenger, 3 to 1. Ridden by Phil Tuck. Latest odds, 28 to 1. 24, is Hello Dandy. Ridden by Neil Doughty. Latest odds, 50 to 1. 26 is Dun Cregan, another Irish challenger. Jerry McGlinch is the jockey. Latest odds, 75 to 1. 27 is Keen Gaddy, the mount of Steve Smith Eccles, couple of pounds overweight. Latest odds, 14 to 1. 28, Colonel Christie, written by Philip Hodds. Latest odds, 66 to 1. 29 is Mender, the mount of Tony Webber. Well back this morning at 66 to 1, latest odds 50 to 1. 30, Del Moss, another who is back this morning at 66 to 1. The mount of Bill Smith, now 50 to 1. 32 is Menford, the mount of Mark Perry, latest odds 100 to 1. 33, Oak Prime, Richard Lindley, the jockey, latest odds 66 to 1. 34, the Vintner. Chris Grant, the jockey, latest odds, 50 to 1. 35, Aragal Boy. Chris Pimlet up, 66 to 1. 
36 is Artistic Prince. Colin Brown, latest odds, 66 to 1. 37, your man, Val O'Connor's the jockey. Where's Blinkers, latest odds, 66 to 1. 38, O'er the Borner. Ridden by Mr. Pat O'Connor, latest odds, 200 to 1. 39, Canford Ginger. Ridden by James Davis, latest odds, 33 to 1. 40, also representing Jenny Pittman, Monty Python. Where's Blinkers, ridden by Paddy O'Brien, latest odds, 100 to 1. 41, Williamson, also Blinkered, ridden by Charlie Mann, latest odds, 66 to 1. 42, Midday Welcome, the mound of Geraldine Reese, latest odds, 500 to 1. 43 is Sidney Quinn, the mound of Peter Double, latest odds, 200 to 1. 44, that's it, Gordon Holmes, latest odds, 66 to 1. 45 is Tower Moss, the mount of Richard Rowe, latest odds, 500 to 1. And finally, 46, Never Tamper, ridden by John Williams, latest odds at 500 to 1. The 41 horses in the paddock for the 1983 Grand National. Now we join our expert commentator, Richard Pittman. Yes, indeed, and the sun drenching these runners. The crowds are 10, 20 deep in places to have a look at them. And the horses, on the whole, look really well. Grittar, the favourite, bouncing around, but he was behind uh, Spartan Missile early on, which really did accentuate his... Uh, smallness he looked small i saw him last night he's 16 one but his jockey and the head lad steve marshall said that when you sit on him he feels twice the size gridar looking a lot better in his coat than when he ran at nottingham uh, frank gilman thought the extra time would certainly bring him to his peak and you can see there on his backside diamonds just two runs so far this season and he's a fresh horse i think that this one will put up a very good performance indeed just let's hope that he keeps out of any trouble and a word of commiseration for John Frankham watching at home today. John should have been in the saddle, but he knows the uh, chances in this game of being fit on the day. Grittar, ridden by Paul Barton, trained by Frank Gilman, his owner. Number two. The paddock beginning to fill up with the owners and trainers now. Number three is Venture to Cognac. This, as Fred Winter said, is one of the class horses in the race. He's had everything wrong with him. He's had all sorts of uh, complaints, and he's had lots of people putting him right, including Kenny Stretton, who was a former jockey, and he's been uh, helping to put this fellow back on the trail. A good horse, ridden by Oliver Sherwood, the son of Nat, who owns this fellow, and I expect this one to go round the inside. He loves a left-handed track, and he'll jump for fun. Number three is Venture Con. One of the best-looking horses in the field is Corbier. There he is with his big, big white blaze, certainly holds himself well, doesn't he? And I expect him to be there at the finish. He stays forever. He's one of three horses in this race that Charles Ratcliffe has uh, produced at, from yearling stage and sold on. So Charles will certainly have a lot of fun, even though he doesn't own one now in this race. Corbier looking in the pinker condition, a former Gra Welsh Grand National winner. I wonder, can he add this to it? Ben de Haan riding him, having his third ride in the Grand National. He's got round once, he rode Royal Exile into sixth place a couple of years ago. That looks like uh, Menford, his backside of Menford. There is Menford, the smallest horse in the race. Three-day eventer, Ginny Holgate had this one to school. He is small and he used to make mistakes. He's a hundred to one shot. Mark Perrett having his first ride. Mark, one of our very best young riders and this fellow as you can see is not very big he runs in the colors of shoal star uh, container limited and in fact uh, he was the medium of a competition in the daily express and uh, a british rail signalman has won half for the day two horses ridden by women this is one of them king spruce number seven a very relaxed type of horse he stays forever former winner of the irish grand national his latest price 33 to 1 ridden by joy carrier and Joy's first ride here over these fences, but she is a very experienced lady indeed. She's ridden the winner of the Irish National. She's also uh, ridden.
ridden the Maryland Hunt Cup winner, and that is over fixed obstacles. Doesn't he look well? And by far the best chance that any lady has had of being in the shake-up. Tackroy from Ireland, who changed hands only this week. He now runs in the colours of, of Mr. Alf Duffield, 33 to one shot. He's ridden by Frank Berry, who's a pretty regular rider here and represents trainer Francis Flood, although he does join Pat O'Connor after the race. Pat, who rides in this on Ur the Border, who he trains for Henry Harper Carew, we'll see him later. But this one, a good sort of horse. He ran uh, fifth in the Irish National last Saturday, running on, and doesn't look any the worse for the wear, does he? And he's had a trip up by boat over from Ireland. He didn't fly, this fellow, but looks in the pinker condition. Political pop, Michael Dickinson's only runner, Graham Bradley, having his first ride. I wonder, can Graham add the Grand National to his victory in the Tote Cheltenham Gold Cup? Ladies' prize, 33 to 1. Well, this horse was rather disappointing on his last run behind Royal D Judgment at uh, Chepstow. He went out like a candle being blown out, but prior to that, he won nicely at Warwick, and on his best form has got a chance. The jockey's about to come out. You can see Dun Cregan's rider there. John Joe O'Neill in the stripes, having his hand shaken. Chris Grant looking very pleased. Geordie Dunn in the hoops there. Then Graham Bradley. Charlie Mann <laughs> having his first ride. There's Grithar's rider, Paul Barton. Ben DeHaan, Paddy O'Brien, Oliver Sherwood. And they're looking very, very happy, these riders. Graham McCourt and Chris Pimlock. John Burke really smiling away. There's one of the valets, Peter St. Anthony Weber, he was second last year. Philip Hobbs and Bill Smith. A regular round there. Richard Rowe, Richard just chewing on something there. Peter Duggan, and there's Kevin Mooney. Colin Brown now, Frank Berry, Huel Davis looking serious. And then Jerry Newman. The spots there of Tim Thompson Jones, the amateur, having his first ride in the national. Steve Smith Eccles, and just having a chat, in fact, a drink of champagne there. Sam Mooreshead, now we've got Pat O'Connor having a go. They're all getting a little bit of courage on the way out. How marvellous. Bona Moman, number 14. Now, this is the horse that has come in for a lot of backing, and how amazing, he's an eight-to-one shot. But he does stay, he's proved it many times over that he can get this sort of trip. I just wonder, is his jumping high enough for some of these fences? I hope it is, because he represents Fort Warwin and Basil Thwaites, and Kevin Mooney having his first ride in the Grand National, although he did win the Topham Trophy over one circuit this course a year ago. Bona Moment looking exceptionally well, but a very short price. And in the paddock, Ginger McCain giving his orders to John Joe Neal. Put your right hand out, <laughs> and they might all turn right, you'll fool the bugger and come home on your own. <laughs> well, that do you? That's fashion. No matter what you say, Ginger will take no notice of it, I'll do what I think That's exactly best. what I thought. <laughs> so, what about you, Stan? Have you got anything to say, do you? Don't me, I only own the bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea. That's it. Yeah. Good ride round, come back safe, yeah, that's, that's important. Right, yeah. 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 All the yeah. way back home safe, that's it, mate. Yeah. So there, John Joe getting his orders, but as he said, he'll do what he likes. Spartan Missile, looking exceptional. All these coat horses have come in their coat in the last couple of weeks. A very big, scopy horse, a nine-to-one shot. Huel Davis having his third ride in the race. He hasn't got round yet, but uh, he's had two winners at this meeting already, one of them over the big fences. And so, very, very popular horse. What a win he would be. And, in fact, we've got Jenny Pittman in the paddock now with her three jockeys ready for the orders. Ben, is as soon as they the starter's hand looks like going to the gate, I want you to be gone. And you, Colin. Yeah. And you, Ben. Uh, Paddy. Foot hard on the accelerator, flat down until you get to the Mellon Road, and then just ease back a little bit off the throttle so they get a good look at the first. For God's sake, don't bring one another down. That right. would be disastrous. Okay, that's okay. okay. What well, you must be in a good position when you come round here the second time, so you can start riding a race down towards beaches again the second time and be right in behind them when you come back across the Mellon Road. And don't win too far. No. Okay. Do you mean me? <laughs> you know where you go. Well, you can't win too far, can you? Petey Sandy, trained by Helen Hamilton. This is a lovely horse. He certainly has made how chasers should be made. His latest betting, 12 to 1, Geordie Dunn in the saddle. And what a marvellous win it would be for Scotland. And he has got every chance. Scotland has been well represented all his, all the uh, years 
and uh, Ken Oliver deserves to have a winner. He doesn't train this one, but he's got three to one. He's had four seconds in the race. Helen Hamilton has produced this horse beautifully, and I certainly give him every chance. There is the trainer in the brown coat behind him. Geordie Dunn going out on Petey Sandy and carrying Scotland's highest hopes. Ladies master there, number 11. And this horse, ridden by Willie Mullins, having his first ride in the national. But he won the Hague Fox Hunters chase here on Thursday over one circuit of these fences. Willie, well, he put up an amazing performance in the Fox Hunters. He went so close to the rails that uh, he'd have put many a professional to shame. There he is in the dark colours on the far side. A 200 to one shot, the ladies' master. Caro Boy, well, this fellow has run some terrific races here in the national. He fell at the fourth last last year. Still going nicely, and he put up a tremendous performance. Jerry Newman in the saddle, he knows his way around here. 33 to one shot, Caro Boy running for the Durkin family, and there are quite a few Durkins here at this meeting, I can tell you. Number 15, Midday Gun, one of uh, John Webber's fine string of horses that he has at home, and he's doing well. A 14 to one shot, ridden by Graham McCourt, having his first ride in the race, but Graham McCourt is one of our very best professional jockeys and really making a name for himself. I fancy this one, and the owner bought this about two months ago. Be a fairy tale if that came true. Grease Paint. Well, he came good at Cheltenham. Colin Magna in the saddle. Colin, who'd won the champion hurdle a year ago. He's a 16 to 1 shot. And this horse, not very big and didn't jump too well in Ireland, but certainly jumped exceptionally well to win the Kim Muir at the Cheltenham Festival. Things seem to be taking shape now. The horses, a lot of them are actually leaving the paddock to make their way to the start. They'll be going through the crowds and wishing them all the luck. And let's join Peter O'Sullivan. And that's the Vintner to the left with the disc, the hoop sleeves, Caro Boy, just behind him. The Vintner, written by Chris Grant. That blue disc being followed by Caro Boy, one of the Irish hopes, and uh, Jerry Newman aboard, Caro Boy. Behind him, Corbier, one of Jenny Pittman's trio with his white face there, Corbier, and Ben de Haan, and behind him, Monty Python, and Jenny's three all together. Monty Python being followed by that uh, gallant ex-invalid, Artistic Prince. Behind uh, Artistic Prince, Gordon Holmes, and that's it. And then further spotted colours, those of your man, and further spotted colours, the white face of Royal Mail. Behind uh, Royal Mail is Petey Sandy. Behind Petey Sandy is Sidney Quinn, and then the stripes, sheepskin nose band, John Joe O'Neill in those, Beacon Time. Behind him is Beach King and uh, Peter Duggan, putting up a bit of overweight. I'll tell you about the overweights in a sec, uh, if you haven't heard them already. That is uh, Gritta, last year's winner followed by Mender. Behind Mender, the striped colours there, political pop. Behind him is Oliver Sherwood on Venture to Cognac, and, behind, and then the stars of Geraldine Reese on Midday Welcome. And behind Midday Welcome is Canford Ginger. Behind Canford Ginger is Spartan Missile and Hugh Davis. And behind Spartan Missile is Williamson and there's Light Seams. Then Aragal Boy. Behind Aragal Boy is Grease Paint, another Irish hope. And then Tacroy. Tackroy with the diamond there. Then the square on those colours there of Tar Moss, uh, the only grey in the race. This is Tackroy being followed by the grey Tar Moss. That's Tar Moss and uh, Richard Rowe. Cost 180 guineas once. Uh, that's Peter Scudamore behind on uh, uh, Fortinus Express. That's Richard Linney on Oak Prime. This is Don Cregan. And being followed by Bill Smith, the most experienced entry rider on uh, Del Moss. Then comes All the Border. Behind All the Border is Hot Tomato and John Burke. John Burke, the only rider who has won it before. Bona Moment, the well fancied Bona Moment. And then comes Colonel Christie. Those very pale colours. Behind uh, Colonel Christie is Keen Gaddy. And then uh, the Ladies' Master. This is in the spots here Midday Gun. And this is the Ladies' Master and. Uh, to Willie Mullins, Willie Mullins, who had such a fine race to win the Fox Hunters, the Hague, Hague Fox Hunters, and these stands really packed now. 
crowds thronging down also to the rail as the 41 runners, the biggest field since 1977 when Red Rum beat 41 runners uh, assembling and sorting themselves out near the Grand National Star. They'll be parading up towards the stand. Spartan Missile drifted a point 10 to 1 from 9 to 1. That's ventured a cognac and uh, Oliver Sherwood, 28-year-old, having his first uh, ride of the national with Gritar, last year's winner, up ahead of him, the top weight, 11-12. Gritar and uh, Paul Barton. Paul having his fifth ride in the national, 29 years old, and the seven to one favorite. That's Oliver Sherwood, number three. Here is two as 14 as Express. Hot Tomato, the star, walking through there. This is 14 as Express to the left, that's Hot Tomato. Tackroy there, the Bow Diamond. Number four, Frank Berry, 32 years old. An Irish champion, having his sixth ride in his mount. A 33 to one chance, Tackroy has just lately changed ownership, only in the last 48 hours, but remains in the hands of his trainer for this race, uh, Francis Flood. Spartan Missile, the 10 to one chance, on whom as a 52-year-old, the late John Thorne rode such a fantastic race to finish runner-up to Alderniti, 1981. Behind him, Corbier. And then these spotted colours there. Behind Corbier, King Spruce. This is Joy Carrier. And there she is, Joy Carrier, 29 years old, twice successful in the Maryland Hunt Cup. A 28 to 1 chance, King Spruce. Very unusual to see a rider wearing spurs as a joy appears to be. I didn't notice that when I saw her in the weighing room a moment ago. She and Geraldine Reese both went in with the jockeys to be given a little address by Lord Derby, tell them not to go mad in the early stages and that he didn't want to see any horses uh, punished for in the closing stages either. That's Royal Mail, old veteran of the National, a 50 to one chance. He's one of the uh, two seniors, 13 year old. The other senior, Del Moss, on whom incidentally Bill Smith's putting up three pound overweight. There aren't many significant overweights. Let me just run through them for you. Grease paint a pound over. Beach King, quite a bit over for Peter Duggan. Uh, seven pounds over. Hello Dandy, a pound over. Mender, a pound over. Delmas, three pounds over. Oak Prime, five pounds over. Arago Boy, one. Over the Border, a significant one, written by Pat O'Connor, 12 pounds overweight. Monty Python, a couple of pounds overweight. And finally, Tarmos, the grey, and as I say, the only grey in the race, one pound overweight. And the parade being led by Gritar. This is Petey Sandy. Petey Sandy, the Hope of Scotland, uh, ridden by 24-year-old Edinburgh-born Geordie Dunn. It's his fourth ride in the National. Behind him, political pop, 22-year-old Graham Bradley. His first ride in the National on his 33-to-1 chance, trained by Michael Dickinson. He's on the 113 mark this season, believe it or not. What a total. And uh, this is the ladies' master, just... Uh, a note to my uh, colleagues out in the country, 201 chance, uh, uh, the ladies' master, John Hammer and Julian Wilson. The colours look almost black in this one, a big surprise if uh, you'd learnt them as I had, as uh, pale green with a black hoop and cap. And this is Caro Boy, sixth ride for Jerry Newman, who's 27, 33 to 1 chance. Caro Boy played by Bill Durkin. Having his third run in the National this horse, he was a bit lucky, a bit unlucky to be hampered last year, otherwise he might have been third. But uh, he's best suited by faster ground, possibly, than we've got today. Bonamomin. 
representing the all-conquering Fulk Warwind stable, and yet another son of uh, Spartan General, an eight-to-one chance today. The other Spartan General products being Spartan Missile and Petey Sandy. Burnham Omen and 28-year-old Kevin Mooney having his second ride in the National, and there behind him, Midday Gun. And 24-year-old Graham McCourt on his 14-to-1 chance, having his first ride. Trained by John Weber, who's on the 22 mark this season. Key to like dry ground, he says. This is pilot officer, trained by one of the ladies responsible for runners in the race, Mercy Rymel. 25-to-1 chance. A pilot officer written by Sam Mooreshead. He's 27, and he's having his sixth ride in the National. He was runner-up on Western Rose in the opener this afternoon to Peter Scudamore and Artifice. And John Joe O'Neill. John Joe, who cracked me as he left the weighing room. I'm, I'm just going out to pick up the loose horses. 33 to 1 he is, uh, John. What a great uh, former champion this. 30, is, 30 years old and having his eighth ride in the National. And unbelievably, he hasn't got round yet. So happy landings especially to him. Grease paint. Mr. Colin Magnier having his first ride in the race. He's 27 year old, 14 to one chance grease paint, one of the big hopes of Ireland. Got a lovely light action, this horse. Real beautiful action, floats over the ground. Saw him out at work yesterday and uh, really impressive to see the way he covers the ground. And the way he does, you'd think he'd be favored by uh, firmer terrain. But uh, maybe you'll handle it, Beach King. And uh, Peter Duggan, having his fourth ride, great enthusiast, 50 to one chance this. Ran a cracking race in the Irish National at Ferry House. He was runner-up there. Carries seven pounds overweight this afternoon for Peter, who's 34, works with an oil rig uh, most of the year. This is his great hobby, his great relaxation. 14 is Express going down, and Peter Scudimore. Peter on the 85 mark, 16 to one chance, 14 is Express. Peter having his third ride in the race, 24 years old, the co-champion with the absent John Frankham and John, let's hope you're not absent too long. And of course, John being replaced on Gritar by Paul Barton. Fortinus Express, trained by Arthur Stevenson. And a even very consistent horse this season. Hasn't uh, been madly successful, but certainly consistent. Consistently placed. That's a uh, hot tomato and John Burke. John Burke, 30 years old on this. Uh, 100 to 1 chance, having his eighth ride in the National, and the only one in the lineup has won it previously, having won on rag trade. Or the border just turns to go down. And so looking at the first there, pilot officer in the centre, Beacon Time, the sheepskin nose band towards the right, grease, pe grease paint just going away, Beach King going away, midday gun on the far side. Hot Tomato coming out to have a look at it. And the majority of them hacking back, trying to forget their butterflies now as they hack back towards the start of the 1983 138th running of the Grand National on which they're now betting as follows. Guitar six to one. Bonham Omen, nine to, nine to one. A Spartan Missile, ten to one. Petey Sandy and the Corvier, twelve to one. A midday Gun and Grease Paint are on fourteen to one. King Gaddy and Fortinas Express, sixteen to one. Pilot Officer, Venture to Cognac, twenty-five to one. Three to one and King Spruce, twenty-eight to one. Beacon Time, Canford Ginger, Caro Boy, Political Pop and Tacroy, all thirty-three to one. And on 50 to 1, Beach King, Delmas, Mender, and Royal Mail with the Vintner. Hello Dandy, 60 61, so is Aragal Boy, Artistic Prince, Colonel Christie, Oak Prime, that's it, these are all 66 to 1. Williamson, Yeoman, and Duncraigan is 75 to 1. Hot Tomato, Menford, and Monty Python, 100 to 1. Or the Border, Sidney Quinn, the Ladies Master, 200 to 1. On 500 to 1, Midday Welcome, Never Tamper, and Tower Moss. Now the result of the 235 at Liverpool, one by number 3, Gay Brief, 11 to 8 favourite. Second, number 8, Dawn Run, 12 to 1. Third, number 2, for Auction, 3 to 1. And just another little postscript to my colleagues out in the country. The Ladies Master and Hello Dandy, both uh, 
looked virtually black, so as an identification, I noted that uh, the ladies' masters rider, William Mullins, is wearing a pair of white uh, Macintosh breeches. So this, uh, this could be a little help down in the country there when the 41 are coming towards you to meet the first fence, as they will be very shortly. Sorting themselves out now. There's Bona Moman. Ten to one from nine to one. Kevin Mooney. Kevin may not be there in the early stages, but he fancies if he gets over the first three, he's going to be picking him up at the place where it matters. And certainly he will be if uh, recent stable form is maintained. Trained, of course, by full form in this one. Enjoying a cracking week. Man has trained the winner and ridden the winner. And Spartan Missile being led by his trainer, Nicky Henderson. This magnificent former hunter chaser who's jumped 64 of these daunting entry fences to date without mishap. Written by Buell Davis, 26, having his third ride in the Grand National and on the 80 mark this season. It's done Craig and being resaddled. This is pretty Geraldine Reese on midday welcome 27 year old Geraldine who became the first lady rider to complete the course in the national last year and cheers she's written two winners this season and this her second ride in the big one to the right there is Colonel Christie being followed by Corbier and Menda Behind Mender, King Spruce, and the, the ladies, the ladies' master, Royal Mail, beginning to wheel now in front of this enormous sun-bathed crowd at entry this afternoon. Greta bidding to join the very select few who won it in successive years like Red Rum most recently and Reynolds Town back in the 30s. There's Williamson in the center and Charlie Mann, 25 years old, having his second Grand National ride. Swapping a joke there with uh, Joy Carrier, who's very relaxed, this uh, American girl who rides King Spruce. Here is to us, number seven. The Vintner to the right. <laughs> and these stands really are jam-packed now. The starter has just asked them to prepare to form a line. Of course, no draw. There will be several of them opting for the inner and others for a quiet hack on the outside in the early stages. Gritar, the six to one favorite. Bona Moment comes in a point eight to one from nine to one. Spartan Missile, 10 to one. Corbier 12 to 1 and 14 to 1 bar those four. And when they jump off, I'll be seeing them across the Melling Road towards the first, where John Hannon will be picking them up and taking them down to the sector towards Beaches, where Julian Wilson uh, takes them over, sees them over Beaches, the Canal and Valentines. Then John picks them up at uh, fences number 11 and 12, and between 10 and 11 is the softest uh, part of the course. And then he, I take them over as they cross the Melling Road, come back onto the race course for third fences 13, 14, and 15, which is the chair, 16, which is the water. Then they're out in the country on their final run. Gritar 
there are Frank Gilman's fine ex-hunter chaser, the subject of some extravagant offers in the past to which <coughs> farmer Frank would pay no heed whatever. An attitude that reflects the Corinthian spirit associated with the national hunt game. And let's hope that as we see the field preparing to come under orders for the 138th Grand National, that you and I and all of us can preserve it for posterity. Guitar, 13 to 2 now from 6 to 1. Bonomo in 8 to 1. Spartan Missile, 9 from 10 to 1. Corbier, 12 to 1. PT Sandy, now 12 to 1. And 14 to 1, bar the 5. And the crowd's looking across now towards the start, uh, waiting for them to be called in. And a line being formed now. This is P.T. Sandy, the Hope of Scotland. Right on the inside, uh, Corbier with Keen Gaddy and the Vintner. And the starter asking him to come in. Monty Python's right over on the far side with Pilot Officer and Don Cregan. And uh, the starter mounts his rostrum. And they're under orders. And will shortly be running in the 1983 Grand National. Formed a very fair line, and they're away. They're away to a roar from the crowd and running down towards the Melling Road. Delmos and Corbier are the first two to make it from the Vintner with Caraboy on the outside. Very close up behind him is Grittar. Towards the far side is King Spruce also, but it's Delmos and Bill Smith from Corbier. Then Caro Boy and then King Spruce and Grittar just in behind him with the Vintner close also. Don Cregan not far behind him, but Delmos making it as they come to the first and we join John Hammer. And Delmos will be the leader at the first of the 30 fences. Jumps it safely, Caro Boy over second, the Vintner over third. Corbier is over all right. Tower Moss has fallen. Midday Gun has fallen. And Midday Welcome a faller. Geraldine Reese, all three jockeys are up. I don't see a faller at the second, but as they come to the third, the big ditch, it's Delmos in the lead from Corbier, then King Spruce right up with the lead, and so is Williamson, so is Caro Boy. And the faller towards the outside is That's It. That's It, I think the only faller as they go to the fourth, and Delmos from Corbier, Williamson, Royal Mail, King Spruce, and over to Julian Wilson. Delmos, Corbier right on the stand side, Williamson there in the centre, towards the far side is Colonel Christie, right on the outside is Royal Mail, just behind him is John Joe O'Neill on beacon time as they jump the fifth, Delmos over it clear from Williamson, Corbier, Caraboy towards the inside, towards the outside is Colonel Christie with Royal Mail and beacon time, and Joy Carrier right there on King's Bruce as they come down to Beecher's Brook. And it's Bill Smith blazing a trail on this side on Delmos with Romel on the outside. Delmos over. And Williamson is down at Beaches. And Joy Carrier has King's Bruce is down. Royal Mail is down. So Joy Carrier is out of the national as they stream towards the next. And over the next. It was Keen Gaddy who jumped in front from Delmos and Corbier. Colonel Christie towards the outside. Then comes Gritter. Then Caro Boy and Beacon Time and Williamson and Grease Paint. A brilliant recovery by Williamson's rider at the canal turn. Three to one was a baller at Beaches as well. And at the canal turn, it's Delmos who's back in the lead from Corbier and Caro Boy. On the outside of that is Gritter in fourth and Colonel Christie. Kill Craigan was a faller at the canal turn as they jumped Valentine's. Delmos over from Corbier, Gritter, Colonel Christie, Caro Boy, Grease Paint and Beacon Time. Behind that is your man, then Williamson. Behind Williamson is the Vintner, then Fortinas Express as we rejoin John Hanmer. And Delmos led over the tenth from Corbier in second place. In third place towards the outside 
is Colonel Christie, then Beacon Time and Gritar, then Caro Boy and Grease Paint as they go to the next. It's Delmas from Corbier, Colonel Christie, Beacon Time, Gritar, then towards the outside, Hello Dandy, then Caro Boy, Grease Paint, then Fortinus Express. And as they go, Keen Gaddy, a faller, and as they go to the next, it's Delmas over first from Corbier, Colonel Christie, Beacon Time, then Hello Dandy, Gritar, Grease Paint, Caro Boy, Fortinus Express, Williamson, your man. Behind your man is Never Tampa. They're all over that one safely, and as they go across the Melling Road, it's Delmas, the leader, from Corbier, Colonel Christie and Gritar, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, still 13-year-old Delmas taking him along, and Bill Smith from Corbier. Just in behind them come the ladies' master and Colonel Christie, and just in behind them comes Gritar. Behind uh, Gritar, towards the outside, is Pilot Officer, then comes Grease Paint, behind Grease Paint, Beacon Time, then Fortinus Express. Behind Fortinus Express is Dun Cregan as they come down towards the next. Delmos still taking him along from Corbier. Then the ladies' master, Williamson on the outside. Pilot officer is next. Coming down towards the one before the chair now, the fence that will be the last on the next circuit. And still Delmos and Bill Smith from Corbier. The ladies' master, pilot officer. Just in behind them come your man, and then Gritar behind Gritar is Beacon Time, and then on the inside and going well is um, Oliver Sherwood on Venture to Cognac. Just in behind them uh, going well is Caro Boy, and then comes That's It, and they're coming towards the chair now. And over that one, it was still Delmos. Delmos in the lead and a fall of their pilot officer. Williamson has gone too at the chair. And it's Delmos leading Corbier now as they come to the water. Hello Dandy is in third on the near side. Colonel Christie's next. Then comes uh, Frank Gilman's Gritar. Then Grease Paint. Then Fortinus Express. Then comes Beacon Time. Behind Beacon Time is Venture to Cognac. Then your man. Then comes Artistic Prince. Behind Artistic Prince is Political Pop. Behind him comes... Uh, uh, John Williams on Never Tamper, just uh, behind Never Tamper now is Bonamoma in making ground, Spartan Missile is next, then Petey Sandy on the outside with Hot Tomato also in pursuit and Caro Boy and as they run down to the next fence it's still Delmas from Corbier, Gritar is improving, Colonel Christ is still there and on the outside Hello Dandy with Grease Paint and over to John Hanmer. And at the 17th, Delmos landed in front of Hello Dandy towards the outside. Corbier, Gritar, Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express and Grease Paint all close up. Social Man and Political Pop and Venture to Cognac and Beacon Time as they take the 18th. Hello Dandy in the centre from Corbier, Delmos, Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express, Gritar, Grease Paint, then Venture to Cognac, your man, and Political Pop as they come to the big ditch. And Hello Dandy out in the centre of the course, Corbier on the near side, Delmas a mistake, Gritar going well on the inner, then Colonel Christie, Fortinus Express, Grease Paint, Venture to Cognac, and a long way back, Attack Cry, and one refusing towards the back of the field is the Vintner, and the ladies' masters almost come to a complete standstill, and another faller there was Menford as we joined. Julian Wilson is very moment refuses. And Beacon Time is also a faller as they come to the one before Beaches with Hello Dandy on the outside, Corbier on the stand side. Gritar made a mistake there but got away with it. In third place is Colonel Christie. Gritar's in fourth. Fourteen is expressed towards the outside. Grease paint going terrifically well as they come down to Beaches for the second time. And it's Hello Dandy who's in front from Colonel Christie and Corbier right on the inside and they jump Beaches. Hello Dandy, Corbier, Colonel Christie. Grease paint a slight mistake. Gritar's over. In fifth place behind those is 14 is express and delmos is tired your man then venture to cognac and uh, uh spot missiles unseated his rider and features as over the 23rd it's corbier who now leads corbier from hello dandy colonel christie grease paints in fourth Gritar's fifth then a gap back to your man behind those is political pop and venture to cognac and delmos 14 is express and then making ground is Petey Sandy as they jump the canal turn. Corbier over from Grease Paint and Hello Dandy. In fourth place is Colonel Christie, then Gritter, and then your man, then Political Pop as they come to Valentine's Grove. Corbier, Hello Dandy, Grease Paint, Gritter, Colonel Christie, your man. 
Cat Boys pulled up at the back. Political pops behind that and then venture to Cognac and Delvos and Petey Sandy as we rejoin John Hanmar. And they've got five to jump and it's Corbier and Hello Dandy from Grease Paint and Gritar. Then your man. Then comes Colonel Christie. Political pop. Venture to Cognac. Then Delmos and Petey Sandy. And they've coming to the last ditch now. Four from home and it's Hello Dandy in the lead from Corbier. Then in third place is Grease Paint. Fortinus Express has pulled up. Grittar's improving to dispute third place with your man. And Grease Paint a gap after that to Colonel Christie. This is the third from home. Hello Dandy and Corbier from your man. Then in fourth place, Grease Paint. Five is Grittar. Then Colonel Christie and Political Pop. And Venture to Cognac and Petey Sandy and Del Moss. And going across the Melling Road with two to jump, it's Corbier. Hello Dandy. Then Grease Paint, your man and Grittar and Political Pop. And Never Tampers Refuse and over to Peter O'Sullivan. Yes, it's Corbier on the inside of Hello Dandy. Then comes Grease Paint, very close with him, and your man also very close. Then in fifth place is Grittar, and under pressure, Grittar. Behind him comes Political Pop, and then Colonel Christie, and then P.T. Sandy and Venture de Cognac, as they race towards the second last in the 1983 National. And it's Corbier, trained by Jenny Pittman, in the lead from your man, Hello Dandy, and Grease Paint. Corbier coming to the second last fence with his white face showing in the lead. Corbier lands in the lead. Your man lands second. Third is Grease Paint. Four, hello Dandy. And five is Grittar. Six, Political Pop. Seven, Colonel Christie. And eight, Petey Sandy coming to the final fence now. Corbier in the lead from Grease Paint. Your man. Salute from Benderhan. Third was your man. And four was hello Dandy. Five was Grittar. Running on strongly is Political Pop but just beaten for sixth place by P.T. Sandy, who's sixth, seventh political pop, eighth is Venture de Cognac, ninth is Colonel Christie, tenth is the long-time leader, Del Moss, and those look like the only ten to finish, as we see Ben Dahan here, 23-year-old Ben, on his third Grand National ride, one of the youngest owners in the race, represented here by this eight-year-old, 22-year-old Grand Barra, from uh, Henley on Thames, his father, a great sportsman himself, and uh, a rowing blue. And here the blue colours of his son, triumphant on this eight-year-old, always been in the van in this unique race, who battled on marvellously to hold the courageous challenge of Grease Paint, to whom he was conceding almost a stone in the closing stages. So Corbier returns traditionally between two mounted policemen to that hallowed arena where the Grand National winner is heralded and unsaddled. A previous winner of the Welsh National at Chepstow and marvellously prepared for this great test by Jenny Pittman. What a marvellous result for her with three runners in the race and this the most fancied of the two, Corbier by Harwell out of Ballycashin who was by that great progenitor of jumpers, Vulgar versatile horse who seems indifferent to the state of the ground goes on firm surface and the soft runner up on his previous run to Scott Lane in the Ritz Club National Hunt Handicap at Chapman. and here returning the winner of the Grand National I made it 10 finishers. I just see Fortinas Express uh, being hacked back, but he hasn't completed the course. And I also see New Tampa coming in. He hasn't completed. Never Tampa, I should say. And Corbier looking beautifully fresh. And the official distance is three quarters of a length and 20 lengths. And there's Jenny Pittman. Uh, 
and uh, Ben Dahan, 23 years old, after his third Grand National ride. Well, there'll be some parties in Lambourne tonight. Jenny Pittman, the first lady to prepare a Grand National winner. Another lady who will be well pleased with her horse, although he wasn't good enough to make the first three, be Helen Hamilton, who is Petey Sandy, just wasn't fast enough but ran on very gamely to finish. Jenny with David Trump. Well, here, the first ever lady to train the Grand National winner, Jenny Pittman, marvellous. That was fantastic. I thought he'd gone to the front too soon. When he was up there all the way, I thought he's going to get tired. And then he was looking around, coming back across the Mellon Road, and I thought he's still all right. And then when that horse came to him again at the end of the race, I thought, not another crisp. I'd have died. I just couldn't believe, you know, it's so wonderful. He's such a wonderful horse, like I've been telling you. Now he's got guts and courage. And the ground absolutely right for him. Yes, and the that's perfect right. right, actually. This line on the interview you did with Hugh McElvenny of the Observer. No. Before the programme. He said, uh, I've got the party organised and we're going to have some fun. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We will do too. I mean, we've had a lot of supporters. My dad has been great to us, my, my mum as well, and, you know, a lot of ordinary people have been really great to us and sent me cards. People have sent me cards that I don't even know. And for that, I'm very grateful. And that's Ben shouting, good old Jenny. <laughs> ben, is it? Ben, ben Arnold, it is, from uh, Chepstow. <laughs> now, Jenny, where did you watch the race? I mean, did you watch it uh, actually through binoculars or did you watch it on television? I must confess I watched it on TV uh, in Robert Stigwood's box. Um, we were all up there watching it and the roof nearly came off that place at the end of the race because that horse looked like catching us on the running. I mean, it was amazing. I tell you what, turn around because you've not seen Ben to hard properly yet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well done, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was. I mean, he, he never put a foot wrong. Should get some good photographs, shouldn't we? Oh, Thank you. One or two, perhaps me sitting back a long way, but. <laughs> no, it's wonderful, Ben. He's going to be a super ride, you know. Yeah. And I mean, he'll bounce him out the gate, let him run. What we want to do now is a red rum. That's three it. times. He could do We'd like to do it three in a row, you see. I'll, I'll tell you what, he's sitting. Start as an eight-year-old. <laughs> he was so impressive, though. He looks if he could do it again and again. He would. He keep galloping that same speed all the way. You know. Uh, just before the Melon Road, I was getting a bit worried. I thought we made too much use of him. But soon as I mean, he got over the Melon Road, and he's got another gear. Then he kept on going again. Applause all round, by the way. Uh, the unsettling pleasure for Jenny Pittman, the first woman ever to train the Grand National winner. But uh, Ben. Jenny was saying it looks as if he never put a foot wrong and we couldn't see anything wrong all the way. Not at all, no. Um, I'd have been happy with the ground a little bit softer for him. When he came over the first tee or the drop, he just, I thought he was feeling his legs a little bit, but he soon got over that when he got on the better ground, softer ground. And uh, from then, I didn't know if I was on a bit quick or not, but I knew he'd keep staying, you know, and he has done. It's fine, yeah. It was a long way from the last, so. I'll tell you what, let's just have a look at that uh, anxious moment you had. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> Uh, we can all have a look at it, actually, as so we come in there in the closing stages. And it was getting close, wasn't it? Finish, you know, you'll finish me It's handicap, though, isn't it, next season? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Brian. Now, we've got Brian Burrow, the owner here. Now, how did uh, Jenny, did Jenny buy the horse for you? Yes, uh, he was bought as a two-year-old, so we've had him for six years. We've always known that this, the sort of guts he showed today would come out, and uh, he's done us proud. I tell you what, you look to me like one of the youngest ever Grand National owners. Well, I've aged a few years during this race, I'll tell you that. There's a long last two miles, but we're very proud of him. And Jenny's, you know, the aptitude he showed in the last couple of miles due to Jenny. Very great, it's very proud of Oh, it's wonderful, wasn't it? I'm so thrilled. I must say hello to my sister at home that's looking after the house for me. If you like to look at the camera, you can talk Hello, Jackie. I'm really thrilled today. I know you'll be crying, and you, Vanessa. We'll give you a ring in a minute. Fine. Well, thanks very much indeed. Brian, you better not go away because we're coming now to the presentation of that lovely trophy. I'll just move out of the way for you. And it's to be presented by... Uh, yes, we are ready for the presentation. By Mrs. Sylvia Matthews, who's the wife of the managing director of News International, the son's sponsor of the race, of course. And don't disappear too far, Jenny. I'll certainly have a word with your blacksmith in a minute. Hang on, where is he? <laughs> right there. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Hello, Bruce, how are you? Fine. 
So here we are. Uh, we've got uh, actually Jenny's trying to get a blacksmith on before the presentation's made. <laughs> so where's Brian uh, Burrow, the uh, winning owner? We've lost. We've actually lost him, and we. Ah, oh, he's there. Thank you very much indeed. I couldn't see you there. Yeah. So there we are. The presentation of the Grand National Trophy. It's a very prized trophy. I hope the race will go on forever. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations on such a marvellous horse. Well, he's got a lot of guts to show in that. And that's what this race brings out for the horses. And uh, I hope it'll go on for a long time. Thank you very, very much. Well, certainly it's another memorable occasion, isn't it? One of the reasons why the Grand National should go on. Uh, um, there's every reason why it should go on. It's exciting for the whole of Britain. Yeah. around the world. Fine, and even in Australia, and I detect that voice, they've been watching today for the first time ever live. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Now, actually, it's absolute chaos in here, so I can just move out of the way slightly. Which way do I go? I'll go here, right, how's that? Uh, we'll have a check on the starting prices, and Jenny's insisting I talk to uh, her blacksmith in a moment. Well, now, let's have a look at the starting prices. First number six, Corbier, 13 to one. Second number 18, Grease Paint, 14 to 1. Third number 37, Yerman, 80, 80 to 1. And fourth number 24, Hello Dandy, 60 to 1. First Corbier, 13 to 1. Second Grease Paint, 14 to 1. Third Yerman, 80 to 1. And fourth Hello Dandy, 60 to 1. The jackpot number there was 306. Now results. Well, now we're back to talk to the man that Jenny Pittman wanted to talk to. Now, you're the blacksmith, are you? Who are you? My name's Andy Marshall. And where do you come from? Lambourne. Up to Lambourne. Turn around and get a good view of the camera. Cause, uh, now, what's so significant is she was yelling and screaming, we've got to put you on. Well, I've always said to her it's a dream for me to play the national winner. And she's made that dream come true for me. And we get on so well together and everything's done between the two of us. It's, it's marvellous. It's just unbelievable. It's, um, as I say, a dream come true. We're in an unusual position in a sense here, talking to a blacksmith about the winner of the Grand National, uh, because blacksmiths know horses better than most people. Now, what sort of a character is Corbier? Oh, he's, he's one with a character of his own. Um, sometimes you can go into his box and he won't let me catch him, you know, and uh, you can't tie him up. He has to stand on his own and loose. And he's just got his own personal little character. Um, he's an individual horse, a horse with his own mind. It's, you know. Knowing him as well as you do, uh, when he was under pressure, did you expect him to pull out the best? Because he does tend to do that, doesn't he? Oh, yes. He, he gives his all every time. You know, he, he, he always finds a little bit extra to give that little bit extra every time. Um, I had four horses in the National that I plated, and out of the four, I had to pick him to win it. Well, you got the right one. Well I done. certainly did. There's going to be some celebration now, isn't there? There certainly is tonight. How did he manage to do that? The Corbier didn't kick you, did he? No, no. That's just through the bad weather. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, there we are. Um, well, the Grand National once more, and what could be its final year, but we hope not, has produced one of the great stories once again. The first ever woman trainer to uh, train a winner of the Grand National. Uh,